It's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to install a SATA SSD on a NVIDIA Jetson TX1 development kit. Then we will copy the contents of the internal flash memory of the Jetson to the SSD and run our Jetson from the SSD itself. Let's get started. For some development projects, it is nice to have a large disk attached to the Jetson from which to work, similar to a PC or laptop environment. I have here a Samsung solid state drive, the 850 Pro, powered by VNAND technology with 256 GBs in it. You know how much I like my GBs. This is a lot of them. Let's open this baby up. Oh, there's more information. It has ultimate read-write performance, enhanced endurance and reliability, and efficient power management. 10-year limited warranty. That sounds good. Oh, has a little red tab on it. I like that. Oh, it's pretty sleek looking. Oh, look, there's an installation guide. Warranty statement summary. I have no idea what this stuff is. I'll just throw it away. So you can mount this. It has little mounting holes in it. Oh, well, let's check to see if it has mounting hardware. I didn't really throw it away. Oh, it has a little, oh, look, stickers. I almost threw the stickers away. That would have been a disaster. It has a little bit of DVD action. No mounting hardware. Oh, well. But stickers, got it like that. And I also have here some cables. So let's open this baby up. Try not to cut through the cables. It wouldn't be the first time. Hmm. Okay. So this is male to female extension, 22 wire SATA cable. This is the SATA connector on the Jetson. Let's plug into the SATA drive first. Should go in here. And this gets wired into the Jetson itself. Looks like this. And we're good to go. This serial cable is attached to the J21 header. It is the serial console and it goes to a PC. This may be useful later if we want to debug our configuration. Let's turn on the Jetson and switch over to our screencast. Okay, so we've booted up. Over here in the sidebar, I don't see the SSD, which probably means that it has not been formatted. So let's open up our disks application. Oh, there it is. 
the SD card reader is the internal flash memory. Go up to our 256 GB disk. So let's format this. Oh, the assessment is the disk is okay. This could have validation like that. Format disk. Compatible with modern systems and hard disks. Okay. Are you sure you want to format the disk? Yes, please. Password. Okay, so we have free space, 256 gigabytes. Let's add a partition. We click the plus button. We want to make it compatible with Linux systems, ext4. We're going to call it Jetson SSD-256. Create, that's us, we're creative. Partition one, 256 GBs, ext4. It is not mounted. So we need to mount it. We can do that by clicking the icon that just showed up here. We can close up our little disk program. At this point, if all you want to do is use your SSD as extra storage, you're good to go. In our next step, we're going to copy the contents of the internal disk to the SSD and then run the Jetson from the SSD itself. Let's copy the internal memory of the flash drive on the Jetson to the SSD. Open up a terminal. We recite the magic incantation. We need sudo here, sudo. CP minus AX slash, and then the mount point of the SSD drive. We just drag it and drop it there. Password. And this will take a couple of minutes. Operation complete. We're finished copying the internal memory over to the SSD. Now we're going to set the Jetson up to boot from the SSD. To do that, we switch over to the boot directory, cd slash boot slash ext linux. We have a configuration file here. Let's make a backup of it before we do anything else. We need sudo here. Copy ext linux dot configuration to ext linux configuration dot original. sudo gedit ext linux dot conf. So currently we're booting off of the internal flash memory. That is this MMC BLK zero is the name of the device. P one is the partition. So let's make a copy of that. We will rename the old one. We'll just label it EMMC. internal emmc and on the new one we will label this as ssd now let's call it sata ssd menu label primary and we'll say sata ssd 
and we need to set the root to point to the actual SSD itself. Let's look that up real quick. Go back to our disks program. So we can see that partition one is slash dev slash SDA one. So let's copy that and we will replace the root of our SSD entry with our new address. The next thing that we need to do is set the default boot to be our new entry. So we'll copy this and put it on this default here. And we need to save it. So in the boot sequence, the bootloader loads off the internal eMMC. It finds this file, extlinux.conf. It will take the default entry, which is SATA SSD, and take this string and pass it to the kernel. The result is that the file root system gets set to slash dev slash SDA1 which is our 256 GB disk. So let's close this out and close this out and we can reboot the system. Shut down. I'll hit the power up button. And here we are. This SD card icon is our internal flash memory. When we open this up and examine the computer properties, we can see now that we have 225.6 GBs free. So we're now running off of the SSD. Let's see if our browser still works. So it looks like we're good to go. You have to take into account that this is a copy of the internal flash drive. So if you have something like a swap file or some other system dependent uh, stuff on there, you'll need to go back and review that and change it around accordingly. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.